There is something about intelligence that transcends across humans, other animals, plants, machines. Maybe argued that intelligence is one of the most powerful and fundamental forces in existence. We're questioning what intelligence is and what the diversity of intelligence are. In a multitude of species and in a multitude of contexts. So many of the non-human animal species that share the planet with us are much, much smarter than we had anticipated. The list is almost endless. Abstraction, self-awareness, empathy, communication. There might be forms of intelligence that we don't recognize yet. Diverse intelligences represent something completely unique in academia. This is the only community that I've been a part of so far that really brings together people who work on natural animal behavior in the wild, people who are doing neural imaging in humans. We have people who study animals and people who study machines. Pulled together with philosophers and theologians and historians. It's also kind of an ethos that is actively disrespectful of the idea of a disciplinary boundary. We've seen the flourishing of brand new collaborations that had really no chance of occurring had these people not had a chance to spend time one on one and really feel the sparks fly. The sounds in the ocean in some ways make amazing interstellar analogs. It's thought that blue whales prior to human ship noise could communicate from pole to pole with their very low frequency sounds. The whales, if they are communicating over these distances, they're probably packaging and creating their signals for long distance transportation. And so this is a kind of, in a microcosm, a kind of a SETI problem. How do they modify their communication system for a contact that is hours away? and how they get together with other individuals when it takes weeks to months to be in contact. And that's similar to what we will start to experience in the solar system. It'll be hours to get a signal and months to get contact again. I think altruism is a very important characteristic of human beings. This is something that emerges in babies in the second half year of life. It, it, it flowers. And you start wondering, why does that happen? That fundamental connection of recognizing that people out there are like me and I am like them gives rise to our altruistic behavior. Now traditionally, the clinical diagnosis has been and still is that autism is at its core, something that causes real deficits in communication with other people and social interaction. What we've found is that autistic people have just as good interactions with other autistic people as non-autistic people do. Can someone take this? That goes against this idea of a universal deficit in social cognition in autism. <laughs> We're starting to create, for the first time, artificial intelligences that may start to accurately reflect biological ones. 
I think the critical question for further development of artificial intelligence has to do with the effects of those systems on us. The subject of artificial intelligence and data ethics is one of the great questions of the age. The technologies have now reached a point and actually are beginning to influence and shape the very essence of what it means to be human. We're increasingly finding these situations where AI systems have to make these decisions that in our eyes have a significant moral component. Our project is dedicated to developing a moral artificial intelligence. What we are putting in there is what humans think is morality, not what the machine thinks is morality. We can develop an algorithm that predicts what most humans would say. An example that we have focused on is kidney exchanges. Sometimes when you're distributing kidneys to potential recipients, you have to decide which one gets it, because you've got one kidney and lots of potential recipients. The human still has to make the decision, but the computer can say, this is the decision that you would make, given your values and the things that you yourself take to be morally relevant. We know dolphins have passed the test for self-awareness. Self-awareness is used as a measure of, do you comprehend who you are relative to other animals? It's just considered a higher level of consciousness. Our preliminary work suggests that they definitely have some structure and order to their sounds. We simply have not had the tools to look at non-human communication adequately until now. If you understand what someone's communicating about, yeah. you understand what they're thinking about. And so it gives us a direct kind of line into their minds, into their intelligence. What we finally have now is data across eight different species, across multiple generations, across hundreds of different individuals, and we're up to about 25,000 gestures. Now with that kind of data set, we can start to look at things like a lexicon, a dictionary. We can look at syntax and grammar. The honeybee sits at a really, really unique point biologically. It has lifelong learning, memory, cognitive capacities that we would describe as metacognition and abstraction. So a lot of the work I'm doing is trying to develop computational models that really describe how parts of the honeybee brain work. And if those models are right, it lets us ask questions of what does a memory look like? What happens when something learns? How might abstraction be possible in a brain? And that sets us up to then explore much more complex brains like our own. I see the Diverse Intelligences Initiative as entering its most productive phase over the next 10 years. At the moment that we're in, where this program has now existed for long enough that a lot of pieces have been generated. I'm very hopeful that we will see in five years a set of frameworks that will map this complex world. If my research group spent the rest of our lives in the field, we would never get as much data as we need to. And so what we've benefited from enormously is being able to collaborate and to be able to, to get both the diversity and the density of data that we need to ask these questions. There's nothing as powerful as having another species really look you in the eye and interact with you in that way. It makes me want to know what they're thinking even more. Curiosity seeks curiosity and intelligence seeks intelligence. One of the byproducts of studying intelligence is an even deeper awe and respect for human beings as conscious beings with multiple intelligences, emotional, intellectual, and artistic. Intelligence has reshaped this planet many times and will continue to do so. 
taken together, all of these new discoveries inevitably change our perspective about ourselves, that we exist as part of a great tapestry of life. There's a constellation of different kinds of intelligences in the world. From ants to orangutans to machines to the internet, intelligence exists all around us if we only had the courage and eyes to see it.